The first topic to discuss, it's actually perfect because we're recording this on Sunday evening and Gambit has just unsurprisingly won AEM. Now, I say unsurprisingly because they faced OG in the final, which is kind of a surprise in itself, you know. And because it's Gambit, like... Like, OG didn't really have anything that could do. Like, they weren't going to win. Like, maybe could have won one map from what I saw. Like, I, I thought Gambit was going to win this anyway. So, obviously, ever since IEM kind of eats here, like, that wasn't a fluke, turns out. Because, actually, like, on paper, Gambit's the best team of, of basically 2021 so far, the last few months. Like, even if they lose, aside from when they play those small online cops, because, if anything, that shows how online players, like, even Gambit can lose to anyone in those, like, snow sweet snow cups or whatever. But if we're talking big online tournaments, it's fucking hard to beat Gambit. Like... If anything, that's half the reason Na'Vi keeps cock-teasing people because they always beat Gambit. You go, oh my God, they could do anything. And then they just do a Na'Vi, don't they? Just keep just going, up. Oh, sorry, sorry, simple. No parole yet, mate. Prison still. Ah, oh, shit, solitary confinement again. Ah, oh, bloody hell. And then you just, just get wrecked, don't you? So let's start there. Right, come on, Virgin. I want to, as, as someone who was a coach, what do you think of Gambit? What do you think about Gambit's style? Because it seems like they're getting so many props from like people who are the experts at the moment. I think they're just such a well-rounded team and I just love their, like, if you see the story, like from where they came from and where they are now, uh, like even taking a guy like, uh, what's his name now? Uh, like Hobbit coming yes. from being a major champion to, to then play with the, with the secondary team in Gambit and then pull this off. I think it's just a, it's a really, really good story when you, when you see it. And, and also like, just the amount of time and hard work they put in is just paying off right now. And they were doing it when everyone else was like, ah, it's COVID mate. I'm not gonna yes, true. I'm not gonna put in the <laughs> same hours as, as everyone else. And and this is also why you see teams like Heroic Gambit and et cetera just just taking off uh, where other teams are struggling. You could argue in the beginning, yes, online was a thing and they might have an edge there, but now we're way past that moment. Like I would even say half a year after the COVID hit. They should be adapted, uh, the bigger teams and all that. Uh, so, so I think like they're just extremely well-rounded team, and some really, really good individuals. Uh, but I think when it all comes to all, it's just uh, the the grind they put in, the the hard work they put in. It's like I would say even watching the old Navi, like you know, before, like I think like four years ago, they were grinding super hard. Okay. Uh, and I think <laughs> it's just paying off, you know. What do you think, Vince? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely go alongside that. I think they're incredibly well-rounded. Uh, I think Hobbit is integral to that team. Um, Axel and Shiro, obviously the two players that are going to get a lot of the plaudits because of their stats and and they're very flashy on the server. They get a lot of the multi-frags. You know, they're the guys at the top of the scoreboard. But what Hobbit's done to resuscitate and resurrect his career has is, is been extraordinary. Um, it's It's been a bit of a miracle but then you also look at Nafani, a guy that's only 19 years of age. He's the IGL for the team, just seems to know how to get the best out of all of his teammates. And what I find really interesting as well is that it, it doesn't just uh, encapsulate the team. It's actually what goes on behind the scenes. They're always super quick to shout out Groove, who's their coach and their analysts. This is clearly a team effort. It's not just the Axile and Shiro show. It's, <coughs> it's the entire package together that makes uh, Gambit work this well. Oh, for sure. I mean, actually, I think that I, I agree also with Raging. Like, even though there's a lot of teams in the online period that I have mad skepticism, like how they'll be online. I mean, I'll give you an example. So their main rival, Heroic. I actually don't know. I think Heroic, if they go to LAN, like, I think they probably would, it'll take a few to get used to it. Some of those players have never been at the top, you know. And more importantly, like the style of play they have, everyone frags on their team. Like, mate, five players aren't going to frag out on LAN with some of them haven't got experience. You know, like, that takes time. You have to adjust. The difference with Gambit is they've got a system, like, that'll actually work on LAN, I'm pretty sure. Some of the players, yeah, again, you might take time, some are young, but that style that they play looks very, very good. Not many teams have found a counter to that at all. In fact, I only think Navi does because they've got simple. I don't think they've actually found a counter to their style of play. Like, Gambit's probably the best style in the world. Plus, I'll also add in, I said this on Twitter, but to, to me, the fascinating thing is, if you go by like raw stats, tournament after tournament after tournament, based on his playing style, obviously she rolls like the MVP candidate for them every single time, right? But I've noticed actually that's changing. One of the reasons I think why you saw Axile get given the MVP for this like ESL one, for example, is because actually it shows that people on some level are leveling up their way they think about the game. Because I remember back in the day 
when Fur and Cold Zero were just beasts on their team, basically, it didn't matter how well Fur played, because think about it, because he was always like the entry player. If he plays amazingly, well, he's not going to kill all five players. So eventually, Cold Zero is going to come in, get the last two kills, win a clutch or something, and then Cold Zero gets to win the MVP. So I even said, technically, you can't win the MVP if you're Fur, because if you do well, that means Cold Zero does well, so then he wins the MVP. It's a bit like what happens with Electronic and Simple. If Electronic plays well, Simple plays amazing every time anyway, so then Simple will win the MVP. I actually feel like part of the reason why people give it to Axile now is because he's an example of a player where even though his stats at this tournament were crazy the stats mean nothing with a player like him he could have stats where he has like almost no plus minus like just you know tiny plus because the raw impact he's having on their game and in their system is massive this is a fucking sick player like again I don't know where they found this guy because he was in that old gambit like years ago when he was super young like he wasn't anything like this I remember seeing him just being like who the fuck's this guy some no name player so man they've, they have caught lightning in a bottle in that team with some of the players they've got what do you think Regin? But yeah, I was just about to comment on that because I think like this is just the sustainability. Like I, we always like in the Danish scene, there's always been talks about like why are you not sticking together? You're splitting up way too fast, etc., right. etc. Uh, like ever since 1.6 source uh, and all that. Like we have always been criticized for for changing players too fast, and this is a roster that hasn't changed players for uh, it's two years almost. It's yes. a really long time, except for Hobby, uh, of course. I don't yeah. have the stats right now, but. Uh, I th- it's just showing the persistency, you know, like, and we want this to work and this is the grind and this is the payoff. Like now you're seeing the payoff of these two years of grinding these uh, loot bed cups, whatever they're called, everything, playing officials on and on and on and on and not be bothered by playing or have to play two BO3s one day where all the big teams is like, oh my God, I can't. <laughs> You know, like me, like trying, crying all the time, like just because uh, yes. they have to play two BO3s or whatever, uh, where they just sit down and play because they're used to it, you know? Um, so I think it's just a, this is just, this just all comes together where COVID kind of benefited them, you know, by being this online era where they have to play constantly because they were used to it. They, it's not changing anything from them. They were grinding this much before, now they're grinding again. Like, I think also the, the, their system, the way they practice and all that. Like, I remember back in 19, I think it was, like, if you practiced Gambit youngsters, like, they were a good practice team because they okay. were really solid and they executed, et cetera, et cetera. But they would only play one map, like, literally, Inferno, seven times a day, once a week. Like, you know, like I don't know if it was one week, but they would literally play one map all the time to master that map, and then they would change the next map, et cetera, et cetera, you know. Where nice. nowadays, you how you're practicing is, like, basically taking one or two or three maps a day and talk over the focus points, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I'm not saying that what they did is like the perfect way to do it, but I'm just saying like it worked for them and their long grind is now paying off. I think that is to that is just the the, the essence of, of this team, in my opinion. Yes. I'll even say as well, by the way, it's a similar storyline if people don't know, because a lot of people don't know this backstory. It was the same story with the Virtus Pro players. Like, basically, when they were a Vanguard, there was some storyline that they'd been together for like two years, and even worse, they were like living in like a boot camp house or something mental for that long. And so, even though, look, I, to a normal team, if you have the option to go elsewhere and get different talent, you are just going to chop and change like they all do. But you can see that if you really do stick together a long time, and their players actually are good enough, in theory, it might take years, but you could get amazing. Like, obviously, think about the level of team play you'd have like understanding everything about your teammates while you want to play communication like you could definitely get that pretty high level so i agree mad plaudits to gambit for all that training like it reminds me of like rare examples like maybe when the brazilians first came up and they were just grinding in that house in la and they had no ego they hadn't gotten now where they're all like fighting and everyone's got big salaries and or, you know they can afford to like fuck around like back then basically you would have never heard of those guys unless they just put their put their fucking nose to the grindstone as we say in england and just go hard so yeah i, I agree always great to see hard work paying off i mean also one thing i think you have to you're also saying like they they captured the lightning in the bottle or whatever you used for a phrase there but i mean like i you also have to get lucky like to yeah, to, sure. to be able to find the perfect mixture like these just fits well like you can have five amazing players but if they don't fit together it's you're not going to get anywhere you know but sure. and here you have like the right mixture of players who can do play together but on top of that you also have some players who are extremely skilled like you, you you saw it before, like with Shiro and, and, and Exile, you know, uh, and not to forget Hobbit, of course. Um, but I, I think like you have to do some credit also to whoever scouting these players, you know, if that is the coach or whoever it was who, who made this team and saw this will work, you know, and and they and that and that the players believe in this 
and also the system just goes a long way. And and, and then that is why you're seeing like, like this now, where they have been like won three tournaments this year already and came in second uh, when the one they didn't win, you know? So. Sure. Want to see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content? Well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.